episode 11. Oh, I'm so sorry, said Dumbledore politely, and he raised his wand again. All three glasses vanished, but it would have been better manners to drink it, you know. It looked as though Uncle Vernon was bursting with any number of unpleasant retorts, but he merely shrank back into the cushions with Aunt Petunia and Dudley and said nothing, keeping his small, piggy eyes on Dumbledore's wand. You see, Dumbledore said, turning back to Harry and again speaking as though Uncle Vernon had not uttered, if you have indeed inherited the house, you have also inherited... He flicked his wand for a fifth time. There was a loud <laughs> and a house elf appeared with a snout for a nose, giant bat's ears, and enormous bloodshot eyes crouching on the Dursley's shag carpet and covered in grimy rags. Aunt Petunia let out a hair-raising shriek. Nothing this filthy had entered her house in living memory. Dudley drew his large, bare, pink feet off the floor and sat with them raised almost above his head, as though he thought the creature might run up his pajama trousers. And Uncle Vernon bellowed, What the hell is that? Creature, finished Dumbledore. Creature won't! Creature won't! Creature won't! croaked the house elf, quite as loudly as Uncle Vernon, stamping his long, gnarled feet and pulling his ears. Creature belongs to Miss Bellatrix! Oh, yes! Creature belongs to the blacks! Creature wants his new mistress. Creature won't go to the pot of bread. Creature won't, won't, won't. As you can see, Harry, said Dumbledore loudly over Creature's continued croaks of won't, won't, won't. Creature is showing a certain reluctance to pass into your ownership. I don't care said Harry again, looking with disgust at the writhing, stamping house elf. I don't want him. Won't, 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 won't. You would prefer him to pass into the ownership of Bellatrix Lestrange? Bearing in mind that he has lived at the headquarters of the Order of the Phoenix for the past year, won't, 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 won't. Harry stared at Dumbledore. He knew that Creature could not be permitted to go and live with Bellatrix Lestrange. But the idea of owning him, of having responsibility for the creature that had betrayed Sirius, was repugnant. Give him an order, said Dumbledore. If he has passed into your ownership, he will have to obey. If not, then we shall have to think of some other means of keeping him from his rightful mistress. Won't! 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 Creature's voice had risen to a scream. Harry could think of nothing to say except, Creature, shut up! It looked for a moment as though Creature was going to choke. He grabbed his throat, his mouth still working furiously, his eyes bulging. After a few seconds of frantic gulping, he threw himself face forward onto the carpet. Aunt Petunia whimpered and beat the floor with his hands and feet, giving himself over to a violent but entirely silent tantrum. Well, that simplifies matters said Dumbledore cheerfully. It seems that Sirius knew what he was doing. You are the rightful owner of number 12 Grimmauld Place and of Creature. Do I, do I have to keep him with me? Harry asked, aghast, as Creature thrashed around at his feet. Not if you don't want to said Dumbledore. If I might make a suggestion, you could send him to Hogwarts to work in the kitchen there. In that way, the other house elves could keep an eye on him. Yeah, said Harry in relief. Yeah, I'll do that. Uh, creature, 
I want you to go to Hogwarts and work in the kitchens there with the other house elves. Creature, who was now lying flat on his back with his arms and legs in the air, gave Harry one upside-down look of deepest loathing, and with another loud, <laughs> vanished. Good, said Dumbledore. There is also the matter of the hippogriff, Buckbeak. Hagrid has been looking after him since Sirius died, but Buckbeak is yours now, so if you would prefer to make different arrangements. No, said Harry at once. He can stay with Hagrid. I think Buckbeak would prefer that. Hagrid will be delighted, said Dumbledore, smiling. He was thrilled to see Buckbeak again. Incidentally, we have decided in the interests of Buckbeak's safety to rechristen him Witherwings for the time being, though I doubt that the Ministry would ever guess he is the hippogriff they once sentenced to death. Now, Harry, is your trunk packed? Mm. Doubtful that I would turn up, Dumbledore suggested shrewdly. I just, I, I'll, I'll just go and... Finish off, said Harry hastily, hurrying to pick up his fallen telescope and trainers. It took him a little over ten minutes to track down everything he needed. At last he had managed to extract his invisibility cloak from under the bed, screwed the top back on his jar of color change ink, and forced the lid of his trunk shut on his cauldron. Then, heaving his trunk in one hand and holding Hedwig's cape in the other, he made his way back downstairs. He was disappointed to discover that Dumbledore was not waiting in the hall, which meant that he had to return to the living room. Nobody was talking. Dumbledore was humming quietly, apparently quite at his ease. But the atmosphere was thicker than cold custard, and Harry did not dare look at the Dursleys as he said, Professor, I'm ready now. Good, said Dumbledore. Just one last thing, then. And he turned to speak to the Dursleys once more. As you will no doubt be aware, Harry comes of age in a year's time. Now, said Aunt Petunia, speaking for the first time since Dumbledore's arrival. I'm sorry? said Dumbledore, politely. No, he doesn't. He's a month younger than Dudley, and Dudders doesn't turn 18 until the year after next. Ah, said Dumbledore pleasantly, but in the wizarding world we come of age at 17. Uncle Vernon muttered, Preposterous! But Dumbledore ignored him. Now, as you already know, the wizard called Lord Voldemort has returned to this country, the wizarding community is currently in a state of open warfare. Harry, whom Lord Voldemort has already attempted to kill on a number of occasions, is in even greater danger now than the day when I left him upon your doorstep fifteen years ago with a letter explaining about his parents' murder and expressing the hope that you would care for him as though he were your own. Dumbledore paused, and although his voice remained light and calm, and he gave no obvious sign of anger, Harry felt a kind of chill emanating from him, and noticed that the Dursleys drew very slightly closer together. You did not do as I asked. You have never treated Harry as a son. He has known nothing but neglect and often cruelty at your hands. The best that can be said is that he has at least escaped the appalling damage you have afflicted upon the unfortunate boy sitting between you. Both Aunt Petunia and Uncle Vernon looked around instinctively, as though expecting to see someone other than Dudley squeezed between them. Us mistreat Dudders! What are you? began Uncle Vernon furiously, but Dumbledore raised his finger for silence, a silence which fell as though he had struck Uncle Vernon dumb. The magic I evoked fifteen years ago means that Harry has powerful protection while he can still call this house home. 